uh, we've been talking about, uh, uh, we started last week talking about uh, new wine for new winners. And today's, we're going to talk about new wine for new winners, but subtitle, The Anointing. Um, and again, we're not talking about <laughs> uh, the uh, fermented alcoholic wine. Uh, <laughs> actually, if you think about it, when the scripture talks about new wine, new wine couldn't be fermented. If you think about it, you know, so because age wine is fermented, right? So if it's new, it couldn't be. It would have to be grapes. But that's a whole nother topic. So <laughs> that's a whole nother story. You know, we won't get into that right now. Uh, we'll get everybody all messed up. But uh, we have talked about you can't put uh, new wine and old wine skins. So how what God has uh, planned for us, the, the anointing and the power that God has planned for us, we can't put this new life in that old body. Um, my wife used the scripture when she taught uh, this, this morning uh, on evangelism, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Uh, uh, Romans 6 says, put off the old man and his deed. So a lot of times, uh, even when we do counseling, uh, we do uh, premarital and stuff like that, we really try to encourage people to not try to take a single life into a covenant world. You know, that's, you know, it's, because you have a, you have rules for a covenant, you have rules for uh, being single, but there's no rules for in between. So if you're trying to be in between, you just, there's no rules for that. So you just, everything is just all jacked up. You know, because it's, it's dysfunctional because it's not in the harmony that it needs to be. So the same thing, if you're in this life uh, to live out purpose, uh, we, uh, we were talking about it uh, last night. Our power went out. So we came up here, hung out at the church, took care of some things at the church. Uh, so we were turning the corner. We were just talking about the transition of our lives. So we reflected like a lot. I said, well, you know, honey, I said, it's wonderful. I said, what happens is we've crossed over into purpose life. Everything is about purpose. We're playing off a of purpose. So every time we make a decision, it's does it line up with purpose? Does it get us closer to purpose? Does it help us to fulfill purpose as opposed to making just any old decision, freelancing? You know, see, so we're being more intentional in everything we do. It's just fulfilling because every time we make a purpose decision, we get more and more fulfillment. So I just threw that's not what we're talking about today, but somebody needed to hear that. All right, so today uh, we, we, talk, we, we talked about preparing ourselves to handle what God wants to pour in our lives, but today we're going to spend some more, uh, more t time with talking about the anointing. You know, we hear about the anointing, we hear about the, the power of God, but we're going to give, get more of a breakdown of what that is and how you can facilitate that in your life because you really need it. You really need it more than you think. All right, so uh, let's go to Isaiah 10. You know, you hear people uh, singing, you're like, that was anointed. What does that mean? That was anointed. Or they're anointed, or, or, but you'll see. It's a wonderful gift if you uh, actually can partake of it. Isaiah 10, 27. It says, and it shall come to pass uh, in that day that his burdens, uh, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. It removes burdens and destroys yokes. The anointing is a power that exceeds anything that man can generate. So it's a power that exceeds anything that we can generate in the, in the natural. Uh, the anointing itself cannot be seen, but the power and its manifestation, its effects, can and should be seen. So it's pretty tangible. Like the scripture says, uh, uh, John 3, I believe it is. It's John 3, verse 8. And this is after, after Jesus was talking, and he said, except a man be born again, he can't even... Well, we could just read it since we're writing this chapter. Uh, we'll start with verse uh, 3. So Jesus answered, said unto... And said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Can't see God's realm, except he be born again. Then Nicodemus asked what we would ask. He says, how can a man be born when he is old? How can he be born? How, so basically, how can he be new when he's old? He says, can he enter in a second time into his mother's womb? 
and be born. And Jesus answered, let me break it down to you. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water, which is the first birth that we go through, and of the spirit, which is supposed to be the second birth where we're submerged in the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So first he said, you can't see it unless you're born again. Then he said, well, what are you? I'm going to go back in my mother's womb. He said, well, listen, there is a birth where you were submerged in water to, to, to give you the nourishment you need before you broke into the earth realm. But then there's another birth where you're submerged in the spirit where you'll get what you need so you can break into the heaven realm. Uh, my wife was sharing this morning when she was teaching on um, evangelism. She was sharing how uh, she was talking about ambassadors and she was saying how uh, if you've been separated from a country, so let's say you leave a country and you separated yourself from that country, to get back into that country, you need a visa. You know, if you've been alienated from that particular country, you need a visa. So she, so she said, we, we need a visa to pass back into the heaven realm because we separated ourselves from the heaven realm. So we, and our visa to get back into the heaven realm is Christ. The word Christ means the anointed one and the anointing. So we'll get to that in a second. But then... Um, it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. It says, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. It says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou heareth the sound thereof, and canst not tell where it cometh, or whether it goeth. Uh, I got gnats up here. Uh, what was that? Uh, where the sound, wherever it goes, where it goes. Uh, so is, uh, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So when we're when we have the anointing, it's kind of hard to get a read on on where where people actually are coming from because you can't really see what's going on, but you you recognize there's something different happening with that particular individual. There's something when they open their mouth, their words are not normal words. You just picking up, you're like, okay, well, I heard that before, but I'm hearing it different now. Just like when you're around someone and you've been betrayed before, so you meet someone and that person opens their mouth, you go, they're telling me the truth. Now, how do you know they're telling you the truth as opposed to everybody else? There's, there's something else on what's coming out of them. There's, there's a level of genuineness, there's a level of power, there's, a, there's, there's some God breathing through what they're communicating. You know it's a God connection. Um, but but if they're just uh, eloquent, that might not be enough. <laughs> you're, like, you're talking a good game, but that's not a, that's not enough. The scripture says this in Acts chapter one verse eight it says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and then you'll be a witness unto me, to Judea, Samaria, and to the other most parts of the world. So what it's saying is that scripture is saying you shall receive power. So that's the anointing, the spiritual gifts. After the Holy Ghost, which is the presence and the person. And the fruit comes upon you. So you have the, the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. The fruit of the Spirit, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, faith, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and temperance. It says against such there is no law. There's no boundaries if you walk in that type of character. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Christ. But then you have the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy, uh, tongues, uh, the gift of tongues, not devotional tongues, which uh, we, we, had, uh, we pray for uh, the baptism of the Spirit for Kalina yesterday, and then we, we actually prayed with Terrence this week uh, back in the office. We had a good time in office. Didn't we have a good time in office? Right. So, but that's, that's your personal, like if I just start speaking in tongues, just glorifying God, I ain't talking to you. There's no need for an interpreter. But if the gift falls on me right now and the rest of this sermon is in tongues, somebody needs to be interpreted because y'all don't know what I'm talking about, right? Because I'm trying to edify you. I'm not glorifying God personally in front of you. I'm actually speaking specifically to you, but I'm speaking in an unknown tongue. So Ernest, myself, Amy, somebody better come up and interpret it because otherwise it's confusion and God's not the author of confusion. All right, so that's, that's the gift you have, uh, the, uh, the gift of healing, uh, the gift of working of miracles. Right, so, you, so those are gifts that fall down. Now, we all can lay hands on, on the sick for them to recover, but there's times when the gift is in operating, where, where somebody needs healing and a gift falls on you, or someone needs a miracle and a gift falls on you. That's the Holy Spirit 
pouring on you at that time to take care of that person in that moment. But the gifts show up when there's the character to, to handle the gifts properly. Like you ever see people that they seem gifted, but they also seem kind of flighty, like a little off. So like they're, they're, they give you a prophecy and you're like, some of what they said nobody would know, but the package is so flaky. You're like, man, they crazy, they tripping. So what happens is they haven't embraced the character, the fruit of the spirit, so it's kind of hard to receive the gift. You got me so far? All right, so again, we're still talking about anointing, but I just want you to, to hear that. So fruit, oh, I just I have this down here too. All right, so fruit, that's the character. That's the, the fruit is the character of a person. That's, the, that's where the indwelling. So you know how when, we were talking about baptism with the Holy Spirit last week when we prayed for Kalina, and again, during the week, I said when we prayed for Terrence. So people, uh, I've talked to people, and they'll go, well, I already have the Holy Spirit. They're not lying. They do. That's called the indwelling. So when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from his dead, you, are, you have the indwelling of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit has to go in you and regenerate. That's how you're born again. He goes in and takes your spirit and makes it alive again because you were dead in sin. The wages of sin is death. So now you have him indwelled in you, resident, but he's not. He hasn't filled you up. That's the baptism where you're filled up with the Spirit. And then the, the evidence that you're indwelled is you live a, a, a righteous life. That's the evidence. The evidence that you're infilled is you communicate in your heavenly language. So you know that you know that you know you have that baptism in you. So when you got weight and you feel that funk, you need to pray a prayer and you done ran out of English, you could just... The uh, Romans 8.26, you could utter groaners that you wouldn't consider speaking on your own. Because the Holy Spirit prays the perfect prayer. All right? So, you know, I like to explain things. All right, so, so then you have uh, uh, the presence will bring the fruit to use the power appropriately. So the presence of God will bring the fruit. The Holy Spirit brings the fruit, the character, the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, faith, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and temperance. So you use the power right. So a lot of people have gifts, but since they don't have the fruit, you can't release them to use the power because they, they'll use it for themselves. They'll use it inappropriately. You got people around here doing all types of stuff, uh, uh, you know, messing people's minds up because they are gifted, but they have no character. They have no fruit. All right. So that's how you say, well, no, that well, it seems like that person was true, but if they use it for the wrong reasons, like that sorcerer saw Paul operating in the gifts, he was like, how much can I pay to get that? He said, man, you, 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 you're about to be cursed because you think you can use God's gifts for your profit. But the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts is for others to profit. So the gifts, I use gifts to benefit you, not to benefit me. Jesus used his gifts to benefit the woman at the well so she can get salvation. He didn't use his gifts just so he would be sweet. To walk around with a badge. I'm a prophet. Uh, I'm a healer. I'm a healer. I'm a healing evangelist. You know, so you walking around trying to get a rep as opposed to walking around serving the kingdom. See the difference? Yeah, so that's the hold up. So you got all these gifts and they're bottled up because the character is what really releases them appropriately. Is that, if that makes sense? But then we don't want to embrace some of the things that's going to um, give us character. That's why we have trouble sometimes. All right, so, so, so the, the, okay, God says, I will come in. My fruit will come in with me. I will leave and my fruit will leave. So when God comes in your life, he brings the character. But if you sin, God leaves your life and the character leaves you. So the fruits don't stay unless you stay in, in living right. When you start living wrong, the fruit leaves. The gifts don't leave, though. So, so the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. So, so that's, that's the thing. When, when you see people, that, they're gifted or they sin, and they go, uh, there's a guy, he was, in a, 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 he was a, a healing evangelist. So he was healing people, but then he got into drinking. And so, so he fell from grace, or whatever you want to call it.